Welcome to Conscious Living here at the Specially Produce Network. We are so glad you're here to support your lifestyle with the fastest growing resource for conscious families. So sit back, relax, connect, and enjoy. Hello everyone, welcome. Welcome to Center for Conscious Kids, our Conscious Living podcast series. I'm here live in San Diego with my friend and my colleague, and I so enjoy her company and her presence and what she offers to the world. And today we are talking about a very cool subject, <laughs> that your prescription, or your subscription, your prescription, your subscription <laughs> to punishment is now canceled. Yes. Yay. Welcome, Marguerite Chadwick. Thank it's so great to see you. Thank you, Ashley. I'm grateful to be here, and I'm excited to talk about this topic of the subscription to punishment now being canceled. Yes. I mean, it is so beautiful. And and really, um, I want to introduce Marguerite as, as an amazing businesswoman. Um, she does amazing work with companies and really supports consciousness and growth within the company by supporting teams and systems in creating really a, an opportunity of each, each person within the company, all the way from the top, all the way down through the corporations and companies to really everyone on the team being their highest self. And, and having that opportunity to bring forward that which allows them to really flourish mm -hmm. inside the work that they do and they bring to the world. And we're just so excited to share about this concept called punishment. It's such a great format for kids and families to really dive in deep and to talk about this. And when we can, we can really bring this across all facets of our lives in our work environments. Mm -hmm in companies and corporations, but then also for kids and families at home, that's really where a lot of punishment, right, in our mm -hmm. world begins, Yes, is um, when we're little and when we're parents and we're raising children and we're providing, it, right, yes. resources and opportunities for yes. them and sometimes punishment gets in there. And so share with us today sure. really what inspired you to come and talk about this idea of how our punishment subscription can be canceled. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, um, as, as we giggle about this, it's actually, uh, we do want to make this a little bit light as well too, and right. not so severe. Although the word punishment can be um, really punishing. But yes, really yeah. coming back to answer your question is that I, I was recognizing and becoming aware that punishment is everywhere. It's on the freeway as we're looking at each other and we're speeding up to the light and we both got there at the same time and people are looking at each other. Right. It's in a grocery store where it's like, could you please just move a little bit faster in this line because right. I've got to be somewhere. Are you cut in line and you have to be punished for that? Right. right. Like, are you going to pay quickly? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then, yes, it comes in, in corporate. It comes, uh, I, I see that quite a bit having spent 25 years in corporate and it's, you might think like, well, what's, what kind of punishment is in corporate? But it's withholding of information many times, uh, embarrassing colleagues. Uh, uh, bullying colleagues, there's a lot of different varieties in that. Right, we have fancy words like lateral violence and oh, all kinds of absolutely. things. Absolutely, the eye rolling and the huffing and the puffing. And that comes from some... Bad point. emails. Oh, bad <laughs> emails and, and uh, I mean, using words, our words matter. We'll get to that yeah. in a little bit. Yeah. But I, I was really recognizing that it's everywhere. Coming out of the yoga practice, and I will hear people in the shower room start beginning to talk about one another and the yoga practice and I'm thinking really what's what's happening here right Where's we have a lot of blaming or shaming or comparing one another absolutely which fuels these ideas of how we really impact each other by punishing each other or negating each other or challenging each other in ways that may not be you know prosperous for the relationship sure and and further to that is that I think then I started to really realize, well, if I'm so uncomfortable with this and I'm noticing this, first of all, Marguerite, I'm starting to judge this. Okay. <laughs> Pinch. Reality check. And 
I took a deep dive into the fact that, and the reality that I am judging and I have been judged and I'm, I'm contributing to the circle of this. So I am equally as much in the whole process. And so I really consciously chose to say, okay, let's, let's look at this and let me not be a part of the problem, but a part of the solution. And it starts with me. That's, That's exactly it. right. And, and so where do we start? You know, when we're, when we're talking about children and when we're becoming parents, right? I mean, I think it's somewhat challenging maybe to parent while um, the child is in utero, right? While the child is growing in, in mom's tummy and, and, and gestating. But I'll have to tell you, I have a little experience with my own daughter where we went to see a movie that called Godzilla a long time ago. And it was eek, eek, eek. It was really, really loud. And uh, my daughter inside me was like, I'll have nothing to do with all this noise. Mm. And so we walked, we had to leave in the middle of the movie. And when we walked out, what was really amazing was I said, oh, I now feel like I'm being a parent already. I'm already caring for my child <laughs> because she said, we have to leave the movie because it's too loud. Right. And it was so funny because I didn't realize at 28 weeks that we could actually start parenting at that point. And we don't really look at punishment, punishment of the fetus because we don't really see that they're doing anything wrong other than growing inside. And yet when they come out or they cry or they have challenges in life and when they're toddlers or they're having issues with their behavior, their emotions, or what they're exhibiting in the world, we then move into this idea of how do we, how do we structure them, right? Yes, yes. Well, really all oh, amazing points, and I, I love the, even the beginning example of the Godzilla because it's annoying, and, and your child, you were, but really what I'd like to share, what comes first to mind is that you're paying attention. Right. So this sounds so, I have a little phrase, it's called Captain Obvious. It sounds so, uh, so natural to pay attention, yet time and our attention is something that we often feel so time poverty stricken. Yeah. And we're not actually paying attention to the nuances of the little one inside of me in utero right. wasn't liking this. Someone is crying, and although to us it might be annoying, they might need something. And again, we might say, well, of course I'm going to attend to their needs, but in what type of fashion right. are we attending to their needs? And are we annoyed? And are we eye rolling even when they're an infant that you're so tired? And albeit you're doing your best. We're exactly. still having energetic movement towards not paying attention necessarily right. and being present fully. Or being overwhelmed with the mm -hmm. attention that we are. We may have our own pain or suffering, mm -hmm. like tiredness as an example. Sure, right? sure. Very and, valid as and, well. And that impacts us to be present. And then when we're not present, what happens with us when we're not present? And we, it starts to break down that relationship. Right? That's, a, that's a great question. And I think... What comes to mind first when we're not present um, and not paying attention is that slowly but surely, and sometimes more quickly, mm -hmm. both parties feel distant. Yes. It starts with the party that feels the child that feels ignored. And right. then- Or afraid they can't get their needs met. And afraid that they might not be able to speak up because right. it's not worth it mom or dad are just not going to pay attention right and we might think that it takes a long time but those messages are very quick to be processed in inside right and over time both parties are distanced from one another right and then there's this space that can create all kinds of things the growth of things <laughs> that we might not want to be growing there insecurity right. uh, and those types of things. Yeah, emotions, frustration, yeah. irritation, overwhelm. And then the the ability for a child to not feel like they know how to do anything else but scream and be cranky and start to manipulate to get what they want, uh, maybe become resentful, start to kick, and all of those things that a parent might rationally say, well, my child is acting out and what's wrong with them? Right. There may not be really anything likely wrong at all need time and some focused attention without the huffing and puffing and eye rolling or I'm so tired why again for the fourth night in the row are we having this issue yeah well you know and you brought up a really good point too and when we say in the title your subscription to punishment is now canceled 
So really, where does that come from? Really not the level of the punisher, mm -hmm. but it's the punishee, right? It's the person receiving the punishment yes. that has the opportunity to really say, I'm complete, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm done with being punished. Right. And, and how can we then as a society, even teaching young, very young children, mm -hmm how we can support them in establishing their needs, asking them to get their needs met mm -hmm. in such a way that um, it may not have, or may have less provocative ways of establishing it. Like, because when we throw a tantrum, for example, we throw ourselves on the ground and start screaming, it is really challenging for most people to work with that. I have seen this, I witnessed this. <laughs> and, I think some of us as parents have actually did it themselves. We did it in front of the kids. We're like, we'll show you. And then we start spazzing out and grinning on the ground. And, yes. and then we ask our children, how, how, how would you like to handle it? And they're like, what? You know, and they don't know. They don't see it. Um, they don't see how their acting out does impact people to respond. Yes. And so as a society, right, we're here to support people and saying, maybe the punishment model the idea of how we punish ourselves really needs to be evaluated and looked at. Well, I'd love to comment on a couple of items that come to mind. First and foremost, uh, one is is that we as adults act out and we start having conniptions. It's just it looks different. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and so going going back though, we get there. We get there because likely we may have not been asked, "What do you need? What do you need right now?" Exactly. And then what, when asking a question, even to a two-year-old, a four-year-old, let's not over, underestimate their ability to articulate and grow and cultivate their ability to say, I don't know right now. Well, if you don't know, what would it look like? What would it feel like? If it was a superhero, who would it be? If it was a puppy, what kind of puppy would it be? We could cultivate them being in touch with what it is that they need. And if they don't know, we can help them. And it helps right. us. Right. I think, I believe that that would be a first step in a difference and then having them know what it is. And we could know, too. Right. Well, and that's really supporting them and understanding discernment. Mm. Right? And to discern, what would you like? You know, you have an opportunity to choose. Yes. And inside that choice, what are some of the benefits? What are some of the problems? And you could, eva you could teach them how to evaluate those different aspects to be able to, and once they had good practice, mm -hmm. that discernment can come quickly. It doesn't have to be a big, long negotiation show. No, right? we, we could teach them, uh, just like we teach them the colors and what the math is, you might be feeling anger, you might be feeling resentment, you might be feeling frustration, you might be feeling, and then it share with what that looks like and they can choose. We've seen the, the Facebook posts that they come in to the kids can come into the classroom now and they can choose what emotion that they feel with how they are greeted. Right. How amazing is that to I choose? I need a hug today. I want a fist pump. I want a booty roll. I, and right. they, they start to then master their own what I need versus here's what you did, here's what you get, or here's right. what is being taken away from you because you didn't do something. I, that's obsolete. It's dinosaur. Let's let it go. Let's it, cancel it up. is because really what you what you just described was a level of conformity, mm -hmm. was a level mm -hmm. of um, in the box thinking. Right. This is how it is. This is our way. This is what we do. This is our culture. This is our mm -hmm. rules, mm -hmm. and you have to follow them. And I think when we bring um, new faces, new lights, new opportunities to the to the environment. We have an opportunity to explore ways we hadn't experienced before. Well, what a fantastic opportunity to explore, to up level for ourselves, for our children, our children who we are growing and, and desiring to be contributing members of community, of their schools, of our society, of corporate boardrooms, of artistic involvement at all. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely, and so, and so, what does that look like? Because sometimes we were we were going to share a little bit about also, what are some of the difficulties for those who are technically the punishers or the people who are in control or the people who are the leaders in the group? You know, they they have some challenges sometimes that navigate that that uh, feed this punishment model. So, sure. So sometimes, right, the people who receive punishment 
are the subordinates or the little ones or the kids or the employees or people that may not ha be in the leadership role. Yes. And so when they're not in the leadership role and they're more in a subordinate role, um, what can they do to support their own making, their own experiences in their yes. environment? Wonderful question and uh, something that I have really been learning how to do, I'd say really the last maybe eight to 10 years, uh, is to speak up and to learn how to speak up. Speaking up doesn't mean acting out. Speaking up means or demanding. Right, right, demanding, for sure, demanding. And I tried that on, and I still try that on once in a while. And I get, I know that that's, I still try that on, so I'm just saying. Um, we're, we're, we're canceling that subscription, too. The demanding subscription. <laughs> yes, we I are. I think that's a good one. Yes, uh, we might have a series of podcasts here with this. But the, the speaking up is to be able to say I'm uncomfortable. Uh, right. This doesn't feel right to me. I don't have all the answers in the moment. This doesn't feel right. Can you assist me? Can you be with me? Could we find another way? I have three ideas. Uh, could we talk about this together? Could we set the stage that there's no right or wrong for either of us? Right. Yet, I need some help. I'm feeling uncomfortable. And what a child can do growing into adolescence, growing into adulthood, could actually then help, or not can, will help the other person, the parent, the leader, the person who's supposed to know everything and we just don't. Right. We can help educate right. the other. Right. So I believe self-advocacy can be taught from a very little age. We can't squish that and that's what can happen accidentally. Yeah. But we could open up the ability for them to ask questions, like all the whys that all the children ask. Right. We could help them form like, hey, I, I'm not feeling good now. Right. Own that. I'm not sure why, mom, can you help? Right. I don't feel good right now. Mom, mom can you help? Or aunt, can you help? Or boss, can you help? Right. I'm uncomfortable. Right. I'd like your help. Because I'm unclear about what I need. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure. And I'd love your support in understanding that. And then what that grows is the cultivation of self-mastery of their own emotion, that it's not outside of them to blame right. everyone else and everything else. It's easy to do. I've worn that also. <laughs> <laughs> and to then uh, actually stop the, you know, pump the brakes and, and create something new. Right. And you know, what does Albert Einstein say? We, we didn't get into the, we can't get out of something with creating it in the same consciousness that we got into it. That's exactly true. So that's exactly true. You know, and, and it really is amazing because I think when we are in the leadership role or we are in the parent role or we are having to guide others or um, support others in this way, I think sometimes we can get impatient or we can get into our own stuff and we can get into our own busyness. And a lot of times then we adopt these ideas that um, we have to just do it my way. And that's just the best way, or it's my way or it's the highway, or take a hike if you don't like it, mm -hmm. or these are the rules that I set up. And many of the rules I don't think we really realize, but many of the rules we create in our lives were, were, were begotten or created mm -hmm. from our mistakes. And so that's kind of the same idea of Einstein is, why would we create rules based in the same environment where the mistake had occurred? Because then it just limits, it limits, it limits the whole environment. And so instead, I would like to support everyone really in evaluating all the rules you got in life. And did, do they really best serve you? Do they really best serve the people you're working with? Mm -hmm. And do they really best serve your relationships in your life? Interesting. And I, I, I really feel for the other side, the, the parent, the leader, the person who is supposed to know and who says we're supposed to know, right? That right. comes back to... I think many times we rinse and repeat what was shown to us. And again, that doesn't mean that it is up to date for 2019 and beyond. Right. And I also really watched leaders in my life or other colleagues in my life that I thought were supposed to know better. And they're coming out of fear most of the time because they don't know better, but they're supposed to because they're wearing this jacket of boss. They're wearing this jacket of right. parent. And we need to support parents too, to, to be able to elevate and upgrade 
absolutely equally as and so that's where this all really stemmed from is to cancel the subscription and upgrade absolutely i mean i've been in a parent role myself and i've told my daughter many times i have no idea what we're supposed to do here can we explore this together and I mean, she was four and five, and she goes, Mom, I, you know, I, you have to decide. I can't decide. And I go, well, I need your decision with me. That's called collaboration. Absolutely. And, and, and by the way, it gets, I just have to say, it's great buy-in. And so, or also known as consensus. Yeah. And when that happens, the child and the other person actually is more willing to participate rather than feeling being made that they were made to do it or they were told or they have to obey. I can, I can tell immediately when I'm interviewing someone for a position, when they feel that um, what, what the punishment has been, where, where they can't speak up for themselves, right. where they feel like they will just follow any rule, but yet there's a brilliance in their mind that right. is just oozing to come out, yet they want to say the right answers. And there's this genius there that wants to come out. And so, again, I bring this back to the corporate, but it stemmed from somewhere 15, 18, 20 years ago that was just rinsed and repeated all the way through. And they Absolutely. can help unravel this and cultivate something that really works better for today moving forward it sure does mm -hmm. and, and what you described was unraveling a lot of the ideas or beliefs we have even as children where we limited ourselves mm -hmm. punished ourselves right gave ourselves tons of self-judgment to the point where our genius got smashed off Yes. Right, it got, yes. it got downplayed oh, we felt like or downgraded. We felt like we were dunces. Right. Um, even marked by grades in school and uh, on a system that is antiquated as well, too. And how many brilliant children are out there that may not be getting the grades, but yet their, their passion is to change the whole system of schooling. Right, it isn't about physics. Maybe they are, their grade is really an A-plus in arts yes. or an A-plus in music. Or in other areas we've actually brought out of our school systems mm -hmm. for mentions of monetary reasons or other things mm -hmm. that we really forgot to bring back in the opportunities for all of the geniuses. What does the Dalai Lama say that the world doesn't need more entrepreneurs, they need more storytellers, they need more kind people right. that can still be entrepreneurs, but yet um, those that are cultivated as those, those really nice, sweet kids and sometimes that they're overlooked as maybe even the sensitive kids are really the, the the beautiful ones that are coming through to help heal our planet, right? Help heal our systems, and wow, well, I'm going to be watching. That's for sure. That's who I'm hiring. <laughs> exactly. Want, that's why I wanted my top ten team, right? <laughs> for sure. Right, and yes. and we really do, and we recognize that the reason why we want our subscription to punishment really to diminish mm -hmm. in our society is not to escape mm -hmm. problems or issues that we created for ourselves, right? Or poor relationships or poor ways of communication. What we want to do is we want to support personal responsibility, growth, integrity, ethics, morals, in such a way that we all agree that this is how we truly feel in our heart, how we'd like to be treated, and how we'd like to treat others. And I think we lose focus of that many times when we move so deep into rules forms of punishment mm -hmm. and forms of judgments towards each other or self-judgments towards ourselves. Well, look at all those layers, just even those words, the vocabulary words right there. They're, they're layers and layers and shields and shields and shields. And then again, then comes the unraveling of where's the true authentic Marguerite and Ashley yeah. and the beautiful you know children that are in front of us. And what an amazing creation to have their best come out from the beginning. Absolutely. And then we, as the adults, get to say yay for helping co-create that. Yes. And everyone's doing their best. Right. Yet in the doing their best, we can really take an examining look and cancel that subscription because there's so much judgment coming back to the beginning. It's all around us. And I think we're doing it in the parking lot and we're doing it to each other with... We could be withholding love and affection from our intimate partner right. and our children see that. Well, that translates through and that only right. grows and it plays out in other ways. Exactly. And then it stifles growth and it stifles creativity and it stifles us. 
So we want the opposite of that, to cultivate something new and improved and different and to upgrade our, our levels of being. Right, in this place. Ex exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so these ideas of sharing and, and really supporting parents and everyone understand that when you're in the role of someone that you're caring for, you're being a steward to, you're resourcing them, remember that you can step back in a few moments, really care for yourself, give that, that nurturing opportunity to you, and do, right? Take a deep mm -hmm. breath and really recognize where is this person coming from? What are they experiencing it? And how can I support them in really changing the way they're speaking, behaving, acting, or thinking, or believing the world is? Mm -hmm and has support them in reframing that so that that conversation stays open, stays elevated, and their creative genius starts to come through. Because, right, productivity, opportunity, um, you know, f f full expression really happens when that begins to unfold. Well, think about when someone asks for our opinion, we feel, most of us light up. Right. And because, Innately, we want to be included. We don't want to be scolded. We don't want to be generally told, any of us, at any level, any age, you're wrong. Right. We want to be included. So what would it look like if we even just redefined what a mistake is? Right. What if there's no mistakes? Right. <laughs> what if there's no mistakes? There's only opportunities for... Um, even when we fub up. <laughs> yeah, right? we really, what are our some responsibilities we need to take for flubbing up? Right. But unless it's illegal or immoral or you took away someone's birthday, which I don't think any of us are going to be doing here, is that we could really even revamp the way a mistake looks and it could be an opportunity of learning. Not could be, it really is an opportunity of learning. It really is. And uh, the opportunity, even in the middle of the mistake, is what if we could support people in really uh, providing that space? Mm -hmm to say, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry I threw a tantrum on the floor. I really wanted that candy. Yes, you know? <laughs> which is fair. Say, okay, you want a candy, you want a sugar. Okay, I got it. How about some apples or an orange? How about that? And what we can find out really what's going on. Do you have sad feelings, you know, or something like that, sure. right? And, and it provides that opportunity for that person who felt they couldn't get their needs met, really share that. I think it's also important to to check in with our children. Yeah. Because we many times might feel like, okay, I've done step one through six, and I'm going to skip the step seven, you know, to ten. Did that satisfy you? Do you feel okay? You know, right. put your hand on their heart or hug them heart to heart. Do you really feel? Do we feel like we can move forward? Really checking in versus we got to get going. So if you're good, I'm good, and not even allowing the other person. Right. That our child or our partner or our colleague to give input. Again, coming back to collaboration. Right. And it's taught. It can be taught from when it's young. Very young. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And collaboration. Even in utero. <laughs> a collaboration feels, and it is, um, inclusive. It's not exclusive. It's not, I am boss and you are subordinate. Right. I am parent, you are a child. How many of us did hear where well, you're, you're just the child? What would you know? Well, actually... They might quite a bit. Quite a bit. <laughs> right. Now that we're thinking about it. Especially when we allow them the opportunity to share and to experience um, that does increase their confidence. It does increase their ability to speak and advocate for themselves, mm -hmm. which I think is so vital. And you're right. We, uh, we a lot of times don't allow that space for exploration of how one is feeling or thinking. Right. So I think that really comes back to allowing time for a process time for our children right. and again we have we've built really big and full lives yet this is our most precious precious asset that we chose to bring into the world right so they deserve all the time in the world right here right now not tomorrow not when you get home not when i have time after some, right now right, right now right that says i that says i'm here for you and i'm present right now right very much so. And I just wanted to say thank you for joining us today because I think what we've shared is really, really beautiful and powerful for the whole world to experience these opportunities, to really, really, inside of each one of us, to say, our subscription to punishment is canceled. Well, well yes, because we can be held hostage by someone else. Mostly it's by ourselves. 
when we uh, aren't, aren't processing and we're taking so much in and we can hold ourselves hostage and wear many cloaks that aren't ours and become confused and disillusioned and have difficult times later in life that cost us a lot and we can we can do better and we can do it and there's it's never ever too late we can do it now that's right we can do it now yes so thank you thank you Absolutely. and everyone have a beautiful day free of all of your judgments yes. and self and really explore that genius and that heart inside of you thank you marjorie thank you ashley Ah, thank awesome. you all for oh, listening good. to this podcast. We did a podcast. great job. Okay, that well, we are that, so grateful. That was so nice. We didn't focus in everyone and experiencing the innovation. Yes, we don't have to give up. And opportunities. No. Yeah, all the transition of what it's like to be punished or, right. or how we inflict punishment. Connect with us. Yeah, the, right? at Center for Conscious Kids dot com. Yeah, yeah. To it sign up for the latest okay? news we did it. We that showcases out. these Thank revolutionary okay, services and products. It was a conversation, so I'm glad. Our global yes. website oh, provides and families with, with, with an hit. online I sure did. And what was neat was so in your and your and transformation when you're from all our augmentative to support. We'll Please share with covered. other kids and, and families and who would process. enjoy these advancements in living consciously. I put that in and I'll publish it. And I thank you so much for joining us. Having such a hard time cutting and pasting from the word.